Italy's considering backing France's combat action against Islamists in Mali. Britain has already said it may boost its military assistance. So far, it sent two warplanes to the conflict zone. The move follows the deadly hostage crisis in neighboring Algeria, which was in retaliation, they said, for France's invasion. Let's talk more about the conflict now with Andy Morgan. He's a freelance journalist and writer specializing in West Africa and the Sahara. It's on the line from Bristol, I believe, yeah. Hi there, Andy. Nice to see you. Um, France, then, getting further support by the looks of it from European nations. Is the situation too much then for the French to handle alone or is there more to it? Uh, I mean I think they, they could do with all the help they can because um, they were very pleased to take these two towns in recent days, Diaboli and Duenza. Uh, but you know anybody who knows Mali that knows that these, t these towns, while important, are rather small fry compared to the towns and cities uh, further up the line which they'll need to grab hold of at some point. Mm. And I think, you know, they're, they're, they're basically the rhetoric is still that as soon as possible they're going to hand over to the African troops, to Malian troops, to ECOWAS. But it's very clear that without the French, without their air power, uh, local troops would have had no hope at all of, of taking Diaboli or Duenza. So... That's the question. I wonder what as soon as possible is going to mean. Is it, are you talking weeks? We're talking months? We're talking years? Well, the, you see, I think the problem is, is that they might easily uh, gain, you know, the military advantage, maybe retake Gao. There are rumors that the Chad, the troops of Chad are massing along the kind of eastern border of Mali. Now, Chad might be a very useful partner because its troops have... Uh, quite a lot of experience of fighting in desert conditions. The problem of the Malian army and the ECOWAS army is that they, you know, they're used to a completely different uh, environment. And, you know, I always say that for a southern Malian soldier, the north of Mali is like Alaska might be for the citizen of Massachusetts or Florida, mm. you know. And, uh, and so they need people like Chad that they could do with Algerian support, but as we know, that is very, very problematic. And, you know, if, if, if the rest of uh, Europe support militarily, then they'll probably no doubt be happy. And also to be, I think, you know, I think Western countries are very reluctant to feel isolated in any of this kind of actions. They want to feel that they're part of a much broader coalition. It makes them feel comforted. It makes them feel that they're not going to sort of take all the repercussions on their own head, as it were. So what's France actually up against here? I mean, launching airstrikes is one thing, but ground warfare, in desert conditions is totally another, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, you know, the problem is, is that the, the, uh, in the Islamist coalition, and, and, we, and it must be understood that this is a very strange and very diverse and very kind of kaleidoscopic coalition of people. You have the hardcore of the Al-Qaeda and the Islamic Maghreb fighters. Now, they are very, very hardened desert fighters. They've been out there for almost a decade, they know the region very, very well. You know, the desert is their absolute home. You also have the Tuareg uh, rebels who basically decided to put their faith in a Yadagali, who's this Islamist leader, this strong man, who's basically seduced a lot of Tuareg into joining his Islamist cause, even though many of us who kind of look at the Tuareg and who know them believe that they haven't really got his Islamist project necessarily in their heart of hearts. Now, they'll also be at home. They know the desert. That's their territory. They're superb desert fighters. Um, they, all these people, they, they, they specialize in this kind of hit and run guerrilla tactics. They'll, they'll, they'll strike very fast and then they'll disappear into the desert possibly even over the borders. And we know that the attack on Diaboli, this town about 400 kilometers northeast of Bamako, was launched from across the border in Mauritania. That would be a huge problem for the, uh, for the, for the kind of France and its allies. Well, Andy, on, Andy the, on, I just wanted to ask you, the Islamists that you're talking about there, they've pledged, haven't they, more terror attacks if the invasion continues. Is there an effective way, though, for the French to deal with such tactics? They're kind of caught between a rock and a hard place, aren't they? Absolutely. And, you know, as soon as... The, the, you see, the, the strange thing about all of this is that before France came in a couple of weeks ago, there was quite a lot of um, 
uh, evidence that the Islamist coalition was beginning to show quite a few cracks. It's such, it's such a hodgepodge of different people, different ethnic backgrounds, you know, Arabs, Tuareg. There are even quite a lot of Songhai now who are in the city of Gao are fighting for the MUJAO, which is the Islamist organization that ruled Gao, another major city in, in eastern Mali. And all this funny, strange coalition was beginning to show signs of weakness, basically. And there's even a theory, which I give some credence to, that the Islamists attacked further south precisely to give, to sort of bring their troops back into line and make them, you know, give them a point of focus, you know. There's another, just, just while you're on the line, because we've only got about a minute left, there's another um, bit of irony here, if you like. Um, uh, there's a, a story that Libyan uh, weapons are being used. They've been spilling over from Libya. Uh, they've been playing a part in this conflict as well in Mali. Ironic, isn't it? Well, you know, the, 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 the funny, the, 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 the very ironic thing about Libya is that everybody says, oh, it's the Tuareg mercenaries who came from, uh, you know, who brought weapons back from Libya and started the rebellion a year ago. The thing is, is that Gaddafi had always played an absolute double role, um, a two-edged role in the Sahel. At the one hand, he'd supported the Tuareg with training, with weapons and stuff like that. But also, he'd also always made sure that they never achieved their aims because he was frightened of his own Tuareg and Berber populations in Libya having strange ideas. So, you know, the role of Gaddafi is actually quite ill understood, I feel, by, you know, the media and stuff like that. But yes, once his, once his weapons arsenals were opened at the end of, you know, after he fell, everybody helped themselves. It wasn't only the Tuareg, it was the Islamists, it was Libyans, it was Egyptians. And speculation, yeah. too, that Libyan Islamists are actually helping the people in Mali now. The same people well, the French and British helped into power, of course. Absolutely. I mean, everyone... You know, the thing is that the, the getting rid of Gaddafi was a major destabilization because he'd been a casually... He'd actually sort of been a kind of a force for, for, for kind of stability in a strange way because he kind of manipulated everyone in a very Machiavellian and clever way over, over decades, you know. But, yeah, the, the, taking him away, everything is much more of a free-for-all. Everything is much more non-aligned and, and kind of uh, gone back to sort of little groups trying to get their own advantage. And, you know, the, the, it's a rainbow nation of, of, of Muslim jihadists now that, that, that are in um, northern Mali. But it's not only them, it's also local people. And when people say, we, when the, Francois Hollande says, we want to get the jihadists out of Mali, we want to sort of uh, get rid of them, the problem is he's also talking about Malians. He wants to get Malians out of Mali, and that is his problem. Absolutely. Andy Morgan, thank you for your uh, specialist thoughts. Much appreciated. Freelance journalist and uh, writer specialising in West Africa and Sahara. You're welcome.